welcome to our Come Follow Me study. I am Debbie and I'm here with spiritualcrusade.com and we also offer over at spiritualcrusade.com a Pondere scripture every single week done by Craig. He does an awesome job, you guys, and that also follows the Come Follow Me program. So whatever was studying in Come Follow Me that week, he will be doing a, script, a Pondere scripture for it that you can also post on your phone. My kids love it. When they see my new Pandora scripture on my phone, they get all excited, like, what's the new picture? What's the new scripture? So that's awesome. We also offer um, a Come Follow Me challenge that Sherry does every week, and it's amazing. She is so good. She has such a gift at applying the scriptures to our lives, which she will also be doing a post on applying the scriptures for our, our lives. But you guys have to check out her challenge every week. It's awesome. So, okay, so much going on. Let's get started for today. We are in 1 Nephi 8 through 10. So today we're going to be talking a lot about Lehi's uh, vision, and this is kind of the cliff note version of the Tree of Life, um, because we're going to see a, the Tree of Life with a lot more understanding in chapter 11, when Nephi tells us of his experience with the Tree of Life. He's going to have a lot more, um, there's a lot more meaning to it and understanding it. So this is kind of the cliff, chapter 8 is kind of the cliff note version, chapter 11 goes in a lot more detail will be in that next week. So today we're gonna to emphasize a lot on the rod of iron. I get really excited about talking about the rod of iron. So we're gonna emphasize that a little bit. And then there's this question we're gonna talk about at the end. What are we learning in our wilderness? So we're gonna ask that at the, at the end and we're also gonna talk about do we have a desire to know? So we'll talk about both of those at the end. So today I just want you guys to start out by trying to visualize Lehi, sorry, I almost said Nephi. I was like tripping on my tongue there. Um, his vi his vision as your vision, okay? So in the Come Follow Me for Individuals and Family Manual, they say it this way. Even if you have studied Lehi's vision many times, this week, think about it the way Lehi did. Think of someone you love. As you do, the security of the rod of iron, the dangers of the spacious building, and the sweetness of the fruit will take on new meaning. So I kind of want you guys to just kind of put yourself in his place as if you were experiencing the vision, okay? So I want you guys to start out imagining waking up and having, he talks about how this man in a white robe invites him to follow him. So imagine following, because we're putting ourselves in, in the vision, and you're following this man and then all of a sudden, He's gone and you find yourself in a dark and dreary waste, which he talks about in verse 7. And then in 8, he says that he traveled in this dark and dreary waste for many hours in darkness. So put yourself in that position. And for me, there would be a sense of panic. Like, where did he go? <laughs> I was trying to follow him. Or I'd start to wonder, like, okay, what am I supposed to learn from this? I've been wandering in this darkness for hours. What am I supposed to learn from this? What am I... What would that like to teach me, right? So he's probably feeling a little bit like, <laughs> okay, what are you trying to teach me? What's next? So then he does this wonderful thing and he prays. And the deliverance in this verse is so beautiful. Those who watch my verse, my my um, last two videos know that I love the thread of deliverance throughout the Book of Mormon and this idea that the Lord does deliver us, okay? Especially when we reach out to him. So he's walking in this darkness for hours and probably feeling very like, what, what do I do from here? Where do I go? Why am I here? All these feelings that we feel when we're in whatever darkness we are in in life, whatever we're going through, that's a hardship. We just start to feel like, what are we supposed to learn? Why am I going through this? You know, where's the help? Where's the guide, right? So anyway, he goes and he prays. And he says, I began to pray unto the Lord that he would have mercy on me according to the multitude of his tender mercies. Isn't that so beautiful? I love that prayer. So here's that deliverance right there at the beginning. And at this moment, he opens his eyes and he sees this field with this tree in the middle. Okay, and he goes and he partakes of it. And he talks about how the fruit was incredible. You guys, this experience, I want you to experience this with him. Because if you've been walking in, in darkness for hours, and you have you feel lost, you feel confused, where's the guide, what am I supposed to be learning, what? Like, and then all of a sudden you see this tree and you partake of this fruit and it's so good. It's so good. And it's, the whole experience is beautiful and just, just brings you so much joy. 
what would you want to do? <laughs> You'd want to share that joy with others, right? Well, what do we do in life when we when we find a movie we love? We social media to everybody. If we find a restaurant we love, right back. <laughs> social media all of our friends and all of our you know I love this restaurant there's no everyone go check out this new restaurant or like whatever it is we love we're, we just want to tell people right well he's experiencing that and I'm sure you and I would be experienced that too if you just experience this incredible experience at the end of this like horrible experience and it shows that contrast of the the darkness and the light that contrast anyway so he wants his family to partake and we see that in verse 13. So he glances out to find them. So just imagine looking out to find your family. And imagine finding a few. He finds Sariah, Nephi, and Sam, and he beckons them. I love the word beckon. It talks about this in verse 15. He first beckons, and then it says that he, he calls to them with a loud voice. But that word beckon is an action word. So what are, what are we doing? What, are, what steps are we taking to invite people to have this experience with us? right? We can't just desire that people will have this joy and this love and this feeling of, you know, we have to beckon to them and call to them. Um, and then they come, but there's others, Lima and Lemuel, that won't come. And once again, I want you to reach out in your mind and imagine those members that won't come and experience this wonderful experience of the tree of life. Now, in verse 11, or in chapter 11, we're going to learn that the tree of life represents the love of God. And I love how Elder Neil L. Maxwell expounds on this just a little bit. He, um, Elder Neil L. Mac Maxwell emphasizes that partaking of the love of God means partaking of the blessings of the atonement. The tree of life is a symbol of God's love and Christ's atonement. The tree of life is the love of God. The love of God for his children is most profoundly expressed in his gift of Jesus as our Redeemer. And then he goes on to quote John 3, 16. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. So this scripture just is so beautiful because that is the way he expresses his love. And that is the most profound expression of his love is by giving us our Savior Jesus Christ. So I want you guys to think back at a time in your life where you went through that darkness and then you experienced that joy of partaking of the blessings of the atonement. And that can look big and that can look small. Any moment with him, any experience with him is so beautiful and can bring so much love and joy and peace and just sweetness. So I want you guys to kind of think about that as you think about this partaking of the tree of life. Just any experience with our, Jesus, our Savior Jesus Christ can bring that kind of joy and we want others to experience that. We want them to have those moments with their Savior that are so sweet and so beautiful, whether large or small, right? Um, okay, the Rod of Ryan Sherry's challenge this week. I don't think it's gonna be posted right when I post this, but it will be posted later this week. She sent me a little text that was gonna, that kind of was giving me like a little, a little preview into what her challenge is gonna be. I am so excited about it. It's gonna be about, I think the title is Hug the Rod of Iron or something to that effect. She hasn't posted it yet. But this is what she said. She said, anything that we love, we have no, no problem holding tight to it. We hug it. It's not a chore. And the thought of letting go during tough moments isn't even an option. So basically, fall in love with the word of God. So in chapter 11, we're gonna learn that the Rod of Iron is the word of God. And she, in her challenge, is going to challenge us to just fall in love with the Word of God. So when hard times come, there's no like, oh, maybe I'll just let go of this. It's no option. We gotta love it, you guys. We gotta love it so much. We have to love all things about our Savior and everything that He has said or inspired His leaders to say. He has to just, we have to have this relationship with Him. We are so excited to learn what our prophets and prophets are prophets and apostles are saying because they speak the word of God. We have to be excited to read the scriptures that were spoken by the prophets of old. Like we just have to fall in love with the word of God. So I'm so excited about Sherry's challenge for this week. So you guys will have to check check that out on spiritualxay.com when that comes out. Okay, moving on with this rod of iron idea. We are going to learn about some different groups 
um, a couple of different groups of people who are trying to get to that tree of life. And the rod of iron or the word of God is going to play a very, very big role in a couple of these. And then something else will play a big role in a minute we're going to talk about. This first group, they're going to be pressing forward, okay, to get on this path. And, the, and that pressing forward, just you can see that effort. They're trying hard, right? But then the mist of darkness comes in, which is the temptations of the world, you guys. And it's going to talk about that again in chapter 11. The temptations are going to come in and swirl around them. They're going to lose their way and they're going to fall off the path. It never mentioned anything about the rod of iron or the word of God with this first group. So first of all, that says to me we need to definitely be in the scriptures along, you know, holding on to that rod of iron. We need to fall in love with it. Okay, not just the scriptures, anything that, you know, the, the, the conferences and the words of the prophets and, the, you know, anything that teaches us about our Savior Jesus Christ, anything that helps us learn of him and draw nearer unto him is, imp is important in my opinion. Okay, so moving on to the next group, group two, they are going to press forward. They're going to catch hold of the rod of iron, okay? So they're even going to be in their scriptures and they're going to be clinging to this rod of iron. They are going to partake of the fruit, okay? So they're going to get there. They're going to show up at the tree they're gonna take that fruit. They're gonna partake of it. It's this beautiful experience. They're gonna have this wonderful experience with their savior and with the atonement. But then something happens and it's in verse 25. They did cast their eyes about. It goes on to say as if they were ashamed. And then we learn about this spacious building. And in this huge spacious building, we learn about these people who are mocking pointing their fingers at mocking those that are partaking of the tr of these beautiful experiences, those that are partaking of the tree. Now, that is so real in our day and age right now. It is so real, you guys. The, the mocking of anyone that believes in Jesus Christ right now is real. The mocking of anyone who follows the commandments. How many of us know this idea of casting your eyes about? Have you seen people who have done that? Who have looked out at what else there is to offer? How many of our teenagers who actually do read their scriptures every night and who are stalwart and amazing and all of a sudden they start to cast their eyes about, right? And they start to see all the people who are mocking their little decisions. And so, that's a tough one. We shouldn't talk about that one. So now there's this group three, okay? Now this group three is gonna press forward, they're gonna hold to, uh, hold tight to the rod of iron, they're gonna fall down at the you know at the tree, they're gonna partake of it, and they're gonna stay. Now, he begins to talk about the people who are in the large and spacious building, and how as they enter there, they begin to turn and point and, sc and scorn. And in 33, he says, but we heeded them not. That to me is so important. And the next verse, 34 says, the, these are the words of my father. And I love how he, it's like, these are the words, listen to this. For as many as heeded them had fallen away. So now we're gonna jump on into chapter nine. Um, I'm only going to hit on really one thing in chapter nine, and that's this idea of what are we learning in our wilderness. So in chapter nine, he says in verse one, and all these things did my father see and hear and speak as he dwelt in a tent in the valley of Lemuel. And you guys, I just have to say, this wasn't, he didn't have these incredible experiences, these incredible journeys with the Lord and with these visions in the comforts of his, of his home back in Jerusalem with all of his gold and his silver and all of his, you know, the luxuries of life. He had it in a really hard time of life. He had it in probably the greatest trial of his life where they had to find their own food and they had to find you know, or grow their own food and they had to make their own way. And I mean, this journey in the wilderness was exactly that. It was its own wilderness, just like in his dream. It was its own journey. And here he's having these incredible experiences. So what are you and I learning? <laughs> what are our hard wildernesses teaching us when we go through those moments where our life is so dark and dreary? What is what what experiences do we learn from that, right? Do we take the time to seek out experiences with the Lord so that we can have these beautiful and remarkable experiences? I mean, we might not, we probably won't ever have a you know this incredible dream like he had, 
But in our, in our tents, in our hard times, in our wildernesses, we too can learn great things from the Lord. In fact, I would, I would guess most of our greatest experiences come when we feel a little broken, when we're feeling just a little bit, um, yeah, broken is the best word. <laughs> we're just a little down. Those are usually when we have our greatest experiences. Um, okay, chapter 10 is so awesome, you guys. Um, he's going to begin to teach us about the Jews. I love how he's going to prophesy of Jesus Christ coming. He's going to prophesy of John the Baptist coming. And he's going to talk about how John, um, John the Baptist baptizes the Savior. Talks about how the uh, Messiah shall rise again. I mean, he's just totally testifying of Jesus Christ. Once again, solidifying the idea that the Book of Mormon is another testament of Jesus Christ. And then I really want to just touch on um, 17. And, and like halfway through, it says, I, Nephi, was desirous also that I might see and hear and know of the things by the power of the Holy Ghost, which is the gift of God unto all those who diligently seek him, as well in times of old as in, as in the times that he should manifest himself unto the children of men. So for this activity with my kids, I had a piece of paper, and I think actually this came from the Come Follow Me primary, I think. But I had a piece of paper and I wrote a picture on it and I folded it up and I, I explained the picture to the kids. And I was talking about how, you know, in on this picture, it had those beautiful things. And I started to describe the picture and the kids were all so excited to see my picture. And right, they were all like, oh, let us see this, let us see it. And I folded it up and I was just like, so do you guys have a desire to see my picture? And they're like, yes, yes, we have a desire. So then I talked about, you know, Nephi and how he had a desire to see the things that his father saw. And um, anyway, we had this beautiful discussion and then at the end I showed my picture. So that's a fun activity to do with kids, just helping them understand that, that, that journey of we have to have a desire first. And I, it was fun for me to bear my testimony and invite them to even at a young age, if they have a desire, they now can pray to ask if the Book of Mormon is true. They now can begin to ask Heavenly Father to teach them about their Savior and help them to love their Savior. Like, it doesn't matter how old or young they are, they can begin now to seek after. So I actually challenged all of them to pray that they will begin to learn and understand and have a testimony. So that was really fun. And they're young, so I don't know how much they got from it, but it was still a good, good little activity. All right, chapter, verse 19, you guys, Craig's ponderized scriptures are always awesome because not only does he give us that scripture that we can put on our phone and think about all week, but he talks about it and he like really just, it's so beautiful the way that he describes and teaches us about these scriptures. So chapter, or verse 19 of chapter 10, for he that diligently seeketh shall find and the mysteries of God shall be unfolded unto them by the power of the Holy Ghost, as well in these times as in times of old, and as well in times of old as in times to come, wherefore the course of the Lord is one eternal round. So if you have a desire to learn and to know, if you have a desire to have more experiences with your Savior and to have those um, experiences with the atonement of Jesus Christ, whether small or big, whatever this may look like, if you diligently seek, you shall find. That is what this verse says. The mysteries of God shall be unfolded unto you. And it's kind of like that paper unfolding it and letting the kids unfold it and look at it, right? So we can have wonderful experiences learning about our Savior Jesus Christ, but we have to seek him, diligently seek him and find, and we will find him. So that wraps up this week of First Nephi 8 through 10. Thank you everyone for joining me and I hope you come again next week. Bye.